Mars Aero Kits were a new set of rules introduced in 2015 to allow IndyCar's manufacturers, Chevrolet and Honda, to not only compete with their engines, but also with their aerodynamic know-how. This video will help you tell the difference between a Honda and a Chevrolet IndyCar, and also go into some of the details that Honda and Chevrolet are trying to gain that little extra edge to win the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500. There are three easy ways to tell the difference between a Chevy and a Honda IndyCar. The first being the engine cover. If you look at the Chevrolet, it has a smaller engine cover with a small dorsal fin. And looking at the Honda, it has a larger engine cover with a larger dorsal fin. Looking to the side pods, Chevrolet has gone with a two-piece side pod which forms an air channel creating more rear downforce, while Honda has gone for a larger one-piece low drag side pod. The other clear difference is between the front wings. Chevrolet has gone for a larger, higher downforce setup, while Honda has gone for a smaller, lower drag setup. Now let's take a detailed look at the changes to the Chevrolet Aero Kit for this year. Remember, this was the Aero Kit that carried Juan Pablo Montoya to the Indianapolis 500 win last year. Firstly, the Chevrolet has sprouted a small dorsal fin on the engine cover. Now this was not run in Indianapolis last year, but it was run at the other two super speedway races at Fontana and Pocono. And it's speculated that this was mandated by IndyCar because the Chevrolet had trouble with straight line speed stability. The biggest visual difference between the 2015 and 2016 Chevrolet Aero Kit are new bumper pods which have sprouted rabbit ears similar to what Honda was running last year. Now these can be run with or without the rabbit ears, but I would speculate that you will see the rabbit ears running in the race for that all important downforce. Chevrolet also has some interesting parts returning from their 2015 kit. One of the smallest and least noticeable parts on the Chevrolet Aero Kit is what is lovingly referred to as the Sponsor Blocker Extension. A small block on the side of the car that extends the fin on usually the left side of the car. These are run asymmetrically, usually just on the left side. Team Penske used this to great effect last year and won the race in a 1-2 finish. Moving further down the side of the car, also worth noting is Chevrolet's side pod flick, which is different for Indianapolis than any of the rest of the super speedways. It's a slightly larger flick versus what is used at Pocono or Texas, which is a smaller flick derived from Chevrolet's road course aero kit. The most controversial parts returning for Chevrolet in 2016 are their streamliner side pods, which go over both the side pod and the side pod flick that cuts off the air channel to the rear wing. Now what this does is cuts down the aerodynamic drag of the car, usually used for qualifying runs. This probably will not be seen in the race. During last year's practice for the Indianapolis 500, each of the Chevrolet cars that spun out and crashed were using these streamliner side pods, and they were partially blamed for Chevrolet's instability at high speeds. They were shelved for last year, but they returned this year, hopefully to greater effect. Now let's take a look at the changes that Honda Performance Development has made on their 2016 Aero Kit. Like Chevrolet, Honda's biggest difference for 2016 are their new bumper pods. More evolutionary than revolutionary, the rabbit ears return for 2016, which can be run with or without end plates, or just without the rabbit ears at all, for a low drag qualifying setup. Also new for 2016 is a new front wing. Thinner than the 2015 version, it also features a curved end plate versus just the straight end plate that was used in 2015. Also, when viewed from the front, it's very clear that Honda is experimenting with an asymmetrical setup for their end plates. With one side clearly larger than the other, it will be interesting to see if Honda can get their asymmetrical setup working as well as Chevrolet. The only returning part of note from 2015 are Honda's swan neck rear wing mounts. These rear wing mounts first appeared in sports car racing in the late 2000s, and it's interesting to see them return on Honda's IndyCar. Speaking of rear wings, look for teams experimenting with the 2014 DW12 rear wings. Schmidt Peterson Motorsports experimented with this last year, though never actually ran them in qualifying or the race. So that's a quick look at the aero kits running in the 2016 Indianapolis 500. I hope you found this video helpful, and if you did, please hit the like button. 
Also, be sure to subscribe for more Indy 500 month content. There's going to be lots of coverage from the 100th running of the Indianapolis 500 right here on this channel, and I hope to have you along all month long. So thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.